Hi, and welcome to the Chapter 12 vocab video for Chem 100. Chapter 12 is all about metabolism and different metabolic pathways. So it's a sort of, although we're, we're sort of going a little bit out of order here in this unit, uh, the reason was because I like to talk about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and metabolism all together in one unit. I feel like that flows really nicely. Um, so the first word, aerobic, refers to, it actually is a word that means pertaining to oxygen, the presence of oxygen. So um, aerobic metabolism is metabolism that occurs in the presence of oxygen. Anabolism, so there's two arms of metabolism. So metabolism is the sum of all of the chemical processes going on in your body. And two types of chemical processes are synthesis and decomposition reactions. So um, anabolism is the arm of metabolism that involves synthesis reactions, building things from building blocks. So building carbohydrates from monosaccharides, etc. The other arm is catabolism. Catabolism is the decomposition arm or the breaking down arm. So when you eat something with starch in it and you break it down into monosaccharides, that would be catabolism. Um, an anaerobic metabolism is without oxygen. So this is a metabolic pathway that is followed when there is no presence of oxygen. In humans and animals and most aerobic organisms that breathe oxygen, anaerobic metabolism can occur as a sort of a side pathway, uh, sort of plan B by some tissues when there's a low amount of oxygen, particularly the muscles. Beta oxidation is how we break down fatty acids. It's a stepwise process, four-step process of breaking down um, fatty acids in order to get energy from them. Uh, the citric acid cycle is an eight-step cycle that uses um, acetyl-CoA, um, or py I guess pyruvic acid is the thing that goes in. So pyruvic acid is the starting material of the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is sort of the middle step um, in the sort of pathway. There's sort of three steps of metabolism, and it's the, it's the middle one. It's sometimes called the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle, so it has a couple of names, the citric acid cycle. Uh, it's also where we get um, all, all of our carbon dioxide waste from. So after you, when you are undergoing metabolism and making ATP through these three steps, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain, um, the citric acid cycle is where all the carbon dioxide comes from. The carbon dioxide we have to breathe out because if it builds up, it changes our blood pH. Um, all right, where are we? The cytoplasm is part of the cell. It's this for the juice in the cell. That is where glycolysis occurs, that first step of metabolism. Um, digestion. Digestion is the sort of the first step of catabolism when we eat food and we need to break down those large polysaccharides and polypeptides into their individual building blocks. That's what we're doing in digestion. So it's a, a part of catabolism, using enzymes to break down macromolecules into smaller molecules. Electrochemical gradient is um, a gra it's a charge and chemical gradient. So a gradient is like having differences in concentration. So it's how we it, the electron transport chain ultimately works to make ATP. It, uh, an electrochemical gradient is established where hydrogen ions or protons are pushed, they're pumped to one side of the membrane so that there's a whole bunch of positive charge of hydrogen on one side and not on the other side. So there's this concentration difference and it's using diffusion basically of that, those hydrogen ions that provides energy to form ATP. Um, emulsification 
is a term that we sort of covered in chapters four, seven, whichever one, when we were dealing with lipids. So an important part of lipid digestion is emulsification, taking large clumps of lipid and using emulsifier, some kind of amphipathic molecule, to break the fat into smaller globules that are more easily, um, that have larger surface area, more surface area, so it's easier to digest with enzymes. Fermentation is a type of anaerobic metabolism that some cells can do. And um, depending on the cell type, they will turn pyruvic acid into either lactic acid um, or alcohol. Gluconeogenesis is a, literally means a process of forming new glucose. So your body, your cells really depend on glucose as their primary energy source. Proteins can be used as energy, but not as well, not as efficiently. So sometimes when we are low on sugar, especially people who are um, starving or who have a very low carb diet, their body will start breaking down protein and converting it into glucose in order to make the glucose the body needs. Ketosis, ketones build up as a, as a product of beta oxidation. So um, fat breakdown leads to, can lead to a buildup of ketones. So um, there's always a, a healthy baseline amount of ketosis going on in our bodies. The more fat you break down, the more ketosis you have. People who have diabetes and can't use glucose, their cells can't use glucose, go nuts on super speed of beta oxidation, which can lead to a dangerous buildup of ketones that leads to ketoacidosis. So normal amounts of ketosis are fine, but an overabundance of ketosis throws the body out of homeostasis and leads to acidification. A metabolic pathway. In chemistry, we call things pathways if they require multiple steps. So a single chemical reaction changes A into B, right? But um, when we're trying to convert glucose into, into ATP, there's several steps that it goes through. So each of these stages, glycolysis, citric acid cycle, the electron transport chain, those are each a different metabolic pathway, a series of steps that take us from A to B, but it's like 10 chemical reactions rather than one. Um, metabolism, I already defined that. A metabolite is sort of a breakdown product of one of our nutrients. Like, um, So they're sort of simple chemicals that are used in metabolic processes. Um, so pyruvic acid would be an example of a metabolite. A mitochondrion is a part of the cell. It's an organelle where ATP is made. It's where the citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain are located in the mitochondria and it's often referred to as the powerhouse of the cell because it generates all the ATP or a majority of it. Oxidative phosphorylation is the chemical reaction that occurs in the electron transport chain at the end of it in order to make ATP. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate has three phosphates on it, and we make it from adenosine diphosphate, which has two phosphates. So we make it by phosphorylation, popping a phosphate onto ADP. That's the phosphorylation part of the term, but it's also an oxidative reaction because um, those hydrogen ions that come in get oxidized by oxygen. The reason we breathe oxygen is for it to be this final electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain. So the oxidation of those hydrogen ions when they come in and they bind with oxygen is very exothermic and that re reaction fuels the very endothermic reaction of phosphorylation. So it's a coupling of two reactions. There's an oxidation reaction that occurs that fuels the phosphorylation reaction that occurs to make ATP. So oxidative phosphorylation is the process of making ATP through a coupling of an oxidation reaction and a phosphorylation reaction. Thermogenesis literally means the generation of heat. 
And this happens when the electron transport chain becomes uncoupled. So normally the electron transport chain is essentially, it uses the flow of electrons, like electricity, to fuel the formation of the molecule ATP. Um, but if you are not using it to make ATP, if you disable the ATPase at the end, then all of that electricity, the electric energy that's generated by that electron flow, ends up producing heat, generating heat. Um, so there are certain types of fat tissue that contain uncoupled electron transport chains for the purpose of generating body heat rather than energy. Um, the urea cycle is a cycle through which we generate or we process amino acids and turn them into waste. So urea is a main component of urine and it is the product of our protein waste. If we have excess protein, we excrete it. We don't really store excess protein. Cellular respiration is the process of using oxygen to make ATP. That So it's really all those metabolic steps that cells go through. Glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain together is cellular respiration. And then glycolysis, the last term on here, should be up in the G's, um, is the process by which we take glucose and convert it to pyruvic acid. So in the master pathway of cellular respiration, there's glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. Glucose starts at the top, goes through glycolysis, becomes pyruvic acid, that was my cat, goes through the citric acid cycle, um, we make lots of carbon dioxide that we breathe out, and we also make lots of electron carriers that go to the electron transport chain, which is where we make a bunch of ATP. ATP is made a little bit in, the, in glycolysis in the Krebs cycle, but mostly it's made in the electron transport chain. So that's a little bit more than you need to know for the vocab quiz, but it was thorough and maybe helpful, I don't know, as a supplement to the lecture. All right, I'll stop talking now.